Hey everyone, Matthias here for my fourth and sadly last Music Making Month video. Today I'm gonna talk about splitting a sound into separate frequency bands using the stereo imager. This can be useful for many reasons, for example if you want to compress just the low end or high end of a sound, EQ two frequency bands differently, add reverb or delay to a sound without mudding up the bass frequencies, apply different kinds of creative effects like distortion or say a phaser to just parts of a sound, do stereo gating or panning effects and much more. So let's get started. So the first thing I want to do is to create the sound I want to split into different frequency bands. Going to create an instrument, select the Thor bass patch from the factory sound bank. That works. To split this sound into two separate frequency bands, I'm going to use the stereo imager. So create a stereo imager, and it will automatically route itself to the floor. On the stereo imager, I will click the solo low band button here at the side. Now the sound you hear is only the frequencies below the crossover frequency set on the stereo imager. And I can tweak this to get the frequencies I want. That takes care of the low band. Now time to set up the high band. Since I want the low and high end on two separate channels in the record mixer, I will first create a mix channel. If you flip the rack around, you'll see a connection on the stereo imager called separate out. Next to this is a little switch where I can select low band or high band. I'm gonna set this to high band and route the separate out to the input of the mix channel. Now only the frequencies above the crossover frequency is heard at this mix channel. If we take a look at the mixer, you can see I now have two channels, one with the low end and one with the high end. This way I can add, say, a reverb to the high end. without mudding up the low end of the bass. And I can use the channel strip to, for example, compress the low end and EQ it lightly. Back in the rack, I can even add some insert effects on the separate bands. So let's add some tape distortion to the high end here. We'll create a scream distortion, select the tape, and again I can always adjust the crossover frequencies to see if I can get a better balance. This is a really good way to control your sounds, to say, not affect the low end and not affect the punch, while still adding some harmonic content with distortion or EQ or add some space with a reverb. In this project I've done the same thing, but with a pad sound. So I've just taken the pad sound and split it up into high and low bands on two separate mix channels. This time I'm gonna do more of a stereo gating effect. So first, I'm gonna go to the mixer and just pan these left and right to get some stereo spread. And then back in the rack, I'm gonna control the volume of this with a matrix pattern sequencer. I'm gonna create two matrix pattern sequencers for both the channels. Then I'm gonna be lazy and randomize patterns on both of these. That's a great way if you're out of inspiration or just can't be arsed to program some new patterns. Then flipping the rack, I will take the gate CV to the level CV in. And finally, in the mixer, just take down these volume faders, because now the matrix patterns are controlling the fader. So if I play this back while playing some chords, you'll hear the effect. And of course you can randomize these patterns if you weren't happy with it. Let's try again. A 
that's a really cool effect and you can do it so easily with this technique. Another thing I love to do is add some more stereo spread. So using the same technique, I have a Rhodes keyboard here. That I've split into two frequency bands. Again, I'm gonna pan these left and right. And what I wanna do now is create a delay at one of the frequencies. I'm gonna pick the high end here. Just create a digital delay line. I'm gonna set it to milliseconds and go to roughly 10. Zero feedback and full dry wet setting. And what happens is this creates kind of the house effect but with separate frequencies. So this is with and this is without. There's a big difference there and it can be really useful. I'm just gonna do some more creative effects on the low end here. I'm gonna add a phaser. And maybe try some tape distortions on the on the high end. That's a trick I really like because it really cuts through the mix. So as you see, you can get really creative with the frequency splitting. You can use it in a ton of different ways. I hope this video gave you some good ideas. I've uploaded the track playing in the background, so you guys can take a closer look at the various ways you can use frequency splitting. It's a self-contained 20 megabyte record reason duo file. Just follow the URL on screen to download it. So thanks a lot for following Music Making Month and me so far. Now go make some music. Thank you.